Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's episode, I wanted to talk about um, STEMI mimics on an EKG. So there are many people that go through a cardiac catheterization and end up having zero coronary artery disease because their EKG looked like a STEMI, but it was not actually um, coronary artery disease. And there are many things that can mimic ST elevations on an EKG, and I want to talk about those things today. So let's get started. So I just had a lecture on this a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was an awesome lecture because there are just so many things that can mimic STEMIs and coronary artery disease on an EKG. And the first thing I want to talk about that mimics this is something I actually made a mistake on when I was a student, and this is benign early repolarization. And when I was a student, I saw this on an EKG um, was thinking it was a STEMI, but it didn't look like the STEMIs I'd usually have, but it was still ST elevations. So I uh, quickly got up and found my preceptor and later to find out it was actually a pretty benign process. Um, so let's get started with that. So this is a good example of benign early repolarization. And the ST elevations are most prominent in V2 through V5. There's usually no reciprocal ST depression and the ST elevations usually have this notching at the J wave or slurring at the J point. So the next STEMI mimic that I want to talk about on EKG can be seen with pericarditis. So in pericarditis, you might have ST elevations diffusely in the EKG, and we'll look at that in a second. But these patients will present with um, chest pain that is worse when they take a deep breath. And you might find these patients kind of leaning forward because they find relief when they lean forward from that pericardial sac that surrounds the heart. Um, and then on exam, you may hear a pericardial friction rub. So let's take a look at the EKG now. So like I mentioned before, pericarditis will present with an EKG that has widespread ST elevation. So ST elevations in almost every single lead um, with concomitant PR depression. Um, and you may even see PR elevation in AVR, the lead AVR. And with pericarditis, again, kind of similar to the benign early repo, you will not see reciprocal ST depression. So the next thing I want to talk about is left ventricular hypertrophy. And this is when the heart um, and the heart muscle become a little bit hypertrophied and there's EKG changes because of it. Um, the most common criteria for this on an EKG is usually um, when you add up the S wave in V1 or V2 plus the R wave in V5 or V6, and if it's over then 35 millimeters, then that's criteria for LVH. But you can also see a couple of other different patterns, and then you can also have some ST elevations commonly in um, V2 or V3 with LVH, and it's hard to discern that from other ST elevations. And this is where the 25% rule becomes in. So the 25% rule is as follows. If the ST elevation or the number of little boxes the ST elevation has divided by the number of little boxes of the R wave minus the S wave is less than 25%, then there is probably no STEMI. But on the other hand, if this is greater than 25%, then there is a possible STEMI. So let's look at the EKG to kind of look at this. So let's take a look at this EKG. So there is an S wave in V1 plus the R wave in V5 that measures greater than 35 millimeters. So there is left ventricular hypertrophy. And we can see some ST elevation in V2 and V3. And this ST elevation measures around five little boxes. And um, I kind of did the measurements for you since it's hard to take a look at the video. The measurements for the R wave on the same V2 or V3 is around five little boxes and the S wave is around 50. And after doing all the math, it is around 11%. So there's probably no STEMI in this EKG. So next I want to talk about a left bundle branch block. And in the past, we've been taught that a new left bundle branch block is an acute MI equivalent, um, but there are the new criteria that come out, uh, and that's the S-carbosa criteria that kind of weigh in on how 
um, bad this left bundle branch block is. But first, let's talk about what is a left bundle branch block. And on EKG, this is a QRS that is wider than 120 milliseconds. And then you also might have positive deflection in the lateral leads because of that strain pattern that you have with left bundle branch blocks. And then you might have um, depolarization after that with T. So you have an upward QRS and then T wave inversions thereafter in the lateral leads, which are 1 AVL, V5, V6. So some common things you'll see with a left bundle branch block are in V1 and V6. And in V6, you will see the little two bunny ears, which make a wide QRS, which is greater than 120 seconds. And in V1, you'll see a little R, huge S, and um, but it's definitely visible in other areas. Um, just with that widened QRS. So this is a great example of a left bundle branch block. So you see the bunny ears in V6, you see the huge S in V1, and you see widened QRSs and a lot of the other leads. Uh, but you can also get confused and also maybe see some ST elevations as well. And this is where the S garbosa criteria comes in. So when it comes to this criteria, there is a mention of concordant and discordant ST elevations and depressions. So concordant simply means the ST elevation is being elevated in the same direction as the QRS. This is the case of the picture on the left. And similarly, if you have ST depressions in the same direction as your QRS, then this is concordant ST depressions seen here on the right. But if you have discordance, this is typically less concerning for an acute MMI. And this is when your QRS is going one way and your ST elevation is going the other way. And again, this is discordance. And all three of these graphs have some numbers associated. Uh, the left has a value of five, the right three, and the middle two. And if you add up your EKG score of all of these findings, a score of greater than three has a specificity of greater than 90% for diagnosing acute myocardial infarction. So if we're applying the s garbosa criteria to this EKG, there is concordance in one in AVL as the QRS is going positively and so is the SE elevation. So that's five points right there. And then in the inferior leads, there is um, concordance with ST depression in 3 and AVF, and that is because the QRS is going down, and so is the depression, and that is a score of 3. So a score of 8 is greater than 3, so this is a high probability of an acute MI with a left bundle branch block. Mm -hmm.